This week on ANN, ADRA President Michael Kruger makes a statement on the humanitarian response in Ukraine and the surrounding regions. The films Uncertainty and Fathers each receive awards at a Christian film festival. And later, an Adventist university impacts needy communities with Zero Charities Initiative. These stories and more coming up. Thank you so much for joining us this week. First in the news, the president of the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Michael Kruger, recently made a statement on the organization's humanitarian response in Ukraine and its surrounding regions. Kruger stated, Europe is facing a long-term massive humanitarian crisis. ADRA has been on the ground since the conflict began on February 24 and has been serving communities in Ukraine and the surrounding region for the past 30 years. The demands for humanitarian assistance continue to grow and change. ADRA has deployed additional emergency response teams and dispatched numerous humanitarian convoys to assist and evacuate displaced families and people in conflict-ravaged regions. Kruger continues, we have escalated resources to assist refugees who have crossed into neighboring regions and are developing long-term programs for families and children to thrive. We want everyone to have access to education, children's services, job placement, health care, and other essential services to help them succeed in their communities. Kruger also highlighted, ADRA is grateful to our Adventist Church family, trusted partners, supporters, and thousands of volunteers for their tireless dedication and contributions. As the Global Humanitarian Agency of the Adventist Church, ADRA reaffirms its commitment to serve, protect, and stand for the Ukraine people and all communities impacted by the seemingly unending crisis. To learn more about ADRA's response or make donations to assist with relief efforts in Ukraine and other countries, visit ADRA.org. We continue to talk about humanitarian aid. For nearly six months, ADRA has been in Honduras providing assistance to more than 750 migrant families who are making the long trek from South America through Honduras on their quest north. All of the assistance is mainly for Haitian migrant families. The project has also been opened up to families from Venezuela, Cuba, Senegal, Angola, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and a few other countries. ADRA Honduras has set up assistance with volunteers, translators, and coordinators in Choluteca and El Paraíso. According to ADRA sources, many arrive with just the clothes on their backs, carrying their children, hurting, stressed, and hungry from not eating anything for at least three days. Migrants also report that they are usually robbed four or five times on their journey, while women and underage girls say they are sometimes assaulted and even raped. Plans are underway to provide personal kits in coordination with UNICEF, the United Nations International Children's Emergency Fund. Agile leaders have expressed their desire for these migrant families to find comfort and basic needs in Honduras so they can continue their journey with hope for the future. Fathers, a documentary showing how different and yet similar fathers around the world are, has been recently nominated in the Best Documentary category at the International Christian Film and Music Festival, the most prominent Christian film festival in the world. Father's project leader, filmmaker and documentarian Adrian Duray explained that the possibility of obtaining nominations or recognition at film festivals is very important to give visibility to the network projects and to the wonderful message of hope that these productions have. Father's is the result of a joint production between six different media centers of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in six different countries. The documentary, which also became a book, has obtained more than a dozen official selections and nominations in the last three years, along with a special award in 2019 at the Religion Today Film Festival in Trento, Italy. We continue to talk about award-winning Adventist cinematographic works in the International Christian Film Festival. In addition to Father, the Uncertainty Project series also received an award. It won the title of Official Selection for two of the nine episodes of the documentary series. The first episode of Uncertainty tells the story of Amy, a young woman who has had epilepsy since she was seven years old and who wakes up every day not knowing when or where she might have the next seizure. The second episode of Uncertainty tells the story of Aina, an elderly woman from Kyrgyzstan, immersed in poverty and with endless doubts about her future. 
In the same episode, Jekka recounts the uncertainty of living stateless, a drama experienced by thousands of Thais who are faced with the same uncertainty. Both episodes were produced by Adventist institution Rede Novo Tempo, the British Union Conference, Hope Channel Southeast Asia, and Hope Media Central Asia. Uncertainty was the selected topic by the Global Adventist Internet Network in Europe, Gain Europe in 2020. Currently, a large number of media centers or entities are working on the Happiness Project, a new initiative for 2022. Plans are for it to be officially presented and launched in October 2022 at the next Gain Europe meeting in Bucharest, Romania. The Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division's Adventist World Radio's new radio station, powered by Sid Media, continues to make waves as they live out their motto, from broadcast to baptism. Hardly a month into its operation, the station had its first fruits with nine people baptized last week, a sign that media evangelism is key in our mission. Communication director for the Southern Africa Indian Ocean Division and the media center, Noel Sibanda, sent this report. The Adventist World Radio Station, powered by Seed Media, is on the forefront in championing the use of media as a tool of evangelism. The Lord gave us our first fruit of nine souls, a sign that media evangelism is here to finish the work. Working hand in glove with the Muikluf SDA Church, the Adventist World Radio had their first activation in Muikluf Church, thereby taking radio to the people. Adventist World Radio. <laughs> Powered by SID Media. The station manager, Sipo Kaleni, with his radio slot entitled Maranatha Drive, could not hide his excitement when the new souls gave their lives to Jesus. And true to the slogan of Adventist World Radio, from broadcast to baptism, this dream has come alive. I was moved when one young person, having watched others being baptized, raised their hand and said, I just want to be baptized. Let's do it right now. And that for me seals this day. We want to give God all the honor and glory for what he is doing through the platform of Adventist World Radio, SID Media. And we are praying for more so that we can impact more lives, both young and old, that people may be baptized through having met Christ Jesus on the platform of AWR SID Media. Adventist World Radio SID has been in operation in less than a month, but already God has shown his power that there are many souls thirsting for his word. As the Bible says, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. It was sort of a spontaneous decision, but I'm so glad I took it. Um, I'll see how the rest unfolds, but I'm really happy. That is never early nor late, so you can just also just come and get baptized and follow the path of righteousness in, in, in Christ. And how I feel, I feel like I've started a new journey, which I'm really ready to accomplish. Hopefully, you know, I'm going to remain faithful with God. I feel, I feel uplifted. I feel strengthened. I feel like I'm with. Launched on the 6th of March last month, the division leaders are very pleased by the power of media as a tool of reaching out. So may God bless us. And with this, we officially open and launch the SID Media. <laughs> Radio continues to make waves in reaching and knocking in many doors, some of which we cannot enter, but radio is doing it for us and Seed Media is on the forefront in championing digital evangelism as we all embark on a strategic plan of I Will Go. The first fruits from the Adventist World Radio Baptisms is a true reflection of our motto from broadcast to baptism and all praise and glory to God. For the Adventist News Network, this is Noah Spanda reporting from Pretoria in South Africa. Coming up, we have the story of Aina, a woman who was forced to leave during the conflict in the Ukraine. And later, Annan tells the story of a Bible that survived the fire in Norway. We may look, pray, read, 
think, worship, sing, and share differently, but we all look forward to the Sabbath. And we all look forward to the future when Jesus will come again. With this message in mind, we arrived at a core component for a new identity system, the creation grid, a simple seven column structure for layout. The grid is a reference both to the prophetic timeline as well as to the creation week that culminated in the seventh day Sabbath. Regardless of what or where you are designing, you can always find information to help you communicate that we are all Seventh Day Adventists. Welcome back. In the last episode of ANN, we brought you the first video in a series that tells the story of people who left Ukraine due to the conflict in the Ukraine. This series, produced by Hope Media Europe, is a part of the Global Hope Channel and ADRA campaign, Hope for Ukraine. Today, we bring you another episode featuring the story of Aina, a woman who fled the war. The Inner European Division and Hope Media in Germany sent us this story. Ситуація дуже важка. Людей евакуюють, евакуювати дуже важко, бо мости розбиті, немає як виїхати. Через річку переводять, там поклали дошки, там лежать з моста ці бетонні плити, все. Хлопці допомагають, волонтери допомагають перейти, але вони снарядки та саме стріляли здалеку по людях, які переходили. Ситуація дуже важка, не можна вести. Підвозу харчів немає. Те, що було в магазинах, те люди розібрали. Ну, там магазини якісь печуть хліб, але люди стоять по 4 години в черзі. Мої діти всі виїхали, та сам на другий день війни всі виїхали звідти. Я залишилася. Але коли на проти мене снаряд попав у будинок, я теж виїхала, бо в хаті двері повиривало, вікна повиривало, побило все. Ну неможливо навіть в хаті багети, які вісять, повиривалися багети на стіни. У сусідки стеля упала. Це страшне, тому всі зібралися, всі виїхали. Але тіло, забори. Я вам ну, желізні забори, оце желізо повиривалося, по вулиці лежало. Зараз нема зв'язку ніякого. Нема зв'язок відірваний, нема світла, нема води, нема газу. Я не знаю, як там зараз люди виживають просто. Це дуже важко, де те саме. Ми добиралися через Київ окружними такими дорогами сюди добиралися. Дуже важко добиралися. Потреби дуже великі, там людей і їсти треба, і вода треба, ну харчі треба людям, і одежа якась треба, бо сидять там десь в холоді. Тим паче, що вони окружили родом, там це, не можна ж вийти звідти, люди не можуть вийти, і не можна їм ні харчі довести, ні ліків, нічого не можна. Я ж кажу, до нас доступу нема ніякого. Я ж кажу, люди, які ну, не мають до, до війни ніякого відношення, вони страдають. Ну, нічому. Зовсім не та саме. Ну, я розумію, там воєнні, вони воюють, там усе. У нас нема цього. Ми мирні люди, 
але нас б'ють. Я хочу хоча б, ну, хоч би стіни залишилися, щоб було куди вернутися. І це всі так думають. Now we're going to know a way to share a story about a very special Bible. Valentina Melanjeva watched helplessly as her home burned to the ground despite the efforts of the fire brigade. Devastated over losing everything she owned, her main concern was her precious Bible, a treasured possession. Melanjeva was in home when the fire broke out just before midnight on December 5th, 2021, but was staying at the nearby Fredheim Lifestyle Center in Kongsberg, Norway, where she worked. Melanjeva grew up in Klaipeda, the third largest city in Lithuania, located where the Baltic Sea meets the Dani River. Her mother belonged to the Orthodox Church, but her family never owned a Bible, never talked about Jesus, and never prayed. After learning about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Sabbath Bible truth, Valentina started going to church. On her second Sabbath at church in Klaipeda, she received a brand new Bible. It quickly became her most treasured possession. Every week for a whole year, Valentina met with two ladies from church to study the Bible and pray. On April 24th, 2004, Melanjeva was baptized. Some years later, Melanjeva moved to Norway. As her Bible had become worn by constant use, she had an artist make a beautiful leather cover to protect it. Returning to Norway and the fire, while they conducted the investigation, the police and fire brigade secured the site and prohibited anyone from entering. When the ban was finally lifted, Valentina's son walked through the rubble, hoping to find treasures in the ashes. Melanjeva prayed and hoped that against all odds, her precious Bible would have survived. When her son returned from the site with her Bible almost completely intact, she was overjoyed. Her Bible was sitting on a shelf along with a pile of burnt books. Valentina concluded, it is amazing what the love of God can do to preserve the most important thing. After a delay due to the coronavirus pandemic, students and faculty of the School of Dentistry at Monte Morelos University in Monte Morelos, Nuevo León, Mexico, have resumed offering free dental services to the community. The initiative called Zero Cavities is part of a special program under the direction of the Health Promoting Universities in Monte Morelos, which helps to raise dental health awareness. The program offers dental checkups, cleaning, endodontist services, extractions, and resin fillings. Zero Cavities is organized by the Health Promoting University leadership in collaboration with the School of Dental Medicine, Los and Life Dental Clinic, and the La Carlota Adventist Hospital's Lloyd Baum Dental Center. Nuevo León's Health Secretary and Municipal Governments of Monte Morelos, Allende, and General Teran are also part of the project. The initiative offers free dental services once a month. Coming up, David Trim recounts the life of William Herbert Edwards, who, for 52 years, served the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But up next, Adventist Mission brings the story of John, who learned firsthand the difference Adventist schools can make in people's lives. now because of this virus. For now, it's just nice to hear your voice and see your face. Nothing beats playing outside in the dirt though. Which reminds me, are your hands clean? Yes! Mommy and Daddy says not a lot of kids get COVID-19. 
but it's always nice to be extra safe. We should wash our hands before picking our nose. <laughs> Washing our hands protects us, but it also keeps us from spreading the virus. In case we touch something dirty, let's always be clean and safe, okay? Love, Joey. Why is there evil in the world? Are Christians hypocrites? Is the Bible a fairy tale? Does Jesus love everyone? Church doesn't feel relevant to my life. Is God even real? You have questions? Let's talk about it. I Believe Bible. Welcome back. Now, Adventist Mission brings us the story of John, a man who learned firsthand the difference Adventist schools can make in someone's life. Adventist Mission has more. John was a bright young student in Malawi. As a teenager, he was handpicked by local leaders of his faith tradition to study at a school in Zanzibar, Tanzania. The goal was for him to learn how to go into unentered areas and create new followers. During his time there, he learned a lot about his own religion, and the next step was for him to also learn about Christianity, since he would be interacting with Christians regularly. After three years, they said you go back home and you research the King James Vision, this one. You go there for that one, special for the King James Vision. Why King James Vision? Because they do believe that the King James Vision have got a good explanation than the other vision. John enrolled at an Adventist school and joined a youth group. He attended all the classes and engaged with pastors in discussions about Adventist beliefs. All the while, he was sending reports back to the religious leaders in Zanzibar. Eventually, after three years studying at Rwaz Mission, the Seventh Adventist Mission, this is where now I come to say, ah, I do understand the Bible. John felt convicted to give his life to God and was baptized at a camp meeting. After his baptism, he stopped sending reports to Zanzibar. John's father was furious. My father, to him, it was an ambition that I'm going to, I, 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 I was to go to Zanzibar, and when I come back from there, they respect me. So to him, it was a privilege that, oh, my, 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 my son now has gone higher. So when he heard that he, I, I have converted into Christianity and now I have been baptized into Seventh day Adventist. To him, it was, came like a blow. But despite rejection from his family, John continued to pursue ministry. Eventually, he was chosen to be a global mission pioneer. So they picked me to put him into global mission pioneer. Can you see now? To go into and enter the areas. So can see, the first mission wanted me to go and enter the areas. They, they, they had the same idea, God just attended to go to Seventh day Adventist and be a global mission of pioneer. He ministered for 10 years as a pioneer, following Christ's method and sharing his testimony with people he met. John hadn't finished his education yet, so he enrolled at Malawi Adventist University. I wanted to pursue my degree. I graduated in 2018, 2018. So I appreciate God, I thank God because I'm now a graduate and now I know many things than before. From his teenage years to his time at the university, John knows firsthand the difference Adventist mission schools make in people's lives. This quarter, a portion of the 13th Sabbath offering will go to help build a community outreach and leadership development center on the campus of Malawi Adventist University. Please pray for those involved as the project develops Pray that more students like John will come to know Jesus through Adventist education. Thank you for supporting Mission through 13 Sabbath offering projects like this. Watch this and other mission stories online by visiting adventistmission.org. Then click on videos at the top. And finally, on today's episode, 
We'll turn to David Trim for a look at This Week in Adventist History. This week, we will hear the story of Wilbert Herbert Edwards, who served the Seventh-day Adventist Church for 52 years. Welcome to This Week in Adventist History. On April 6, 1854, William Herbert Edwards was born in the U.S. state of Massachusetts. At the age of 23, he, with his father and mother, accepted the Adventist faith. Now, Edwards was a graduate of the business course at Boston College, and the next year, 1878, he was invited to work for the Seventh-day Adventist Publishing Association, the church's main publishing house, in Battle Creek, Michigan, as manager of the wholesale and retail book department. Edwards stayed with the publishing house until 1893, having meanwhile married, in 1878, Mary Bias. From 1893 to 1897, Edwards was treasurer of the General Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. And then in 1897, he was elected treasurer of the Foreign Mission Board based in Philadelphia, which position he held until the Mission Board was united with the General Conference in 1901. During the next 17 years, Edwards was treasurer, first of the Lake Union Conference and then of the Northern Union Conference before in 1918 he joined the Treasurer's Department at the General Conference headquarters in Washington, D.C. Edwards worked there for 12 years until, as one of his colleagues and friends wrote, failing health brought to a close 52 years of continuous service in the cause he loved so dearly. Mary Edwards died in 1936 and William on September 23, 1938. On April 4, 1930, the first Adventist baptism was held in the southern province of Sulawesi Island in what was then called the Dutch East Indies, today's Indonesia, and the first local church there was organized. South Sulawesi was then a district under the direct supervision of the Celebes Mission. Today there is a separate South Sulawesi Conference with headquarters in Makassar, which has 3,072 church members. That was this week in Seventh Day Adventist History. Thanks for watching ANN. Join us next week for more news from the headquarters of the Seventh Day Adventist Church. Did you know the Adventist Church has a YouTube channel where you can watch ANN video, ANN in depth, and plenty of other amazing videos on prophecy, health, and Bible study? Just go to YouTube and search for the Adventist Church. Make sure you click the subscribe button so you never miss a new video. And remember to leave a comment or a prayer request. We have people who are dedicated to praying for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Before we say goodbye, here's some good news from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 28. It says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. That's our program for this week. And remember, you can always visit Adventist.news for daily news and videos. Until next time, God bless. Take care.